Welcome back to another Touring Teacher Lesson video. Today we are playing one of my favourite maths games that I play with my classes and I thought that today you would like to join us as well. Now before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all the other lesson videos and learning from home videos to help you guys out. Alright, let's get started. So we are playing a place value column game or a grid game. So as a bit of a refresher, I thought we could go over what place value is. Some of you might be thinking, oh, I got this, this is easy. But it's always good, even as adults, to have refreshes just like this one. So what is place value? Place value is the value of each digit in a number. For example, the 6 in 460 represents 6 tens or 60. The 6 in 6005 represents 6 thousands or 6 thousand. What we need to remember is, even if the digit is the same, its value changes depending on where it is in the whole number. Something to help us is a place value column or some place value grids, just like this one. So you might have seen this before. I think that this place value grid has been in nearly every single classroom that I've been into because it is such a helpful tool when we're doing place value or any type of maths. So it helps us remember the order that the numbers go up into. The place value column starts with ones, then tens, then hundreds, then thousands. It goes on a lot longer than this, but we'll just start with this for now. So if I put four numbers in these columns, we're going to use that to help us come up with what the value of each digit is. So we've got the number 5783. If I asked you, what is the value of the eight? Some of you, I can probably hear you yelling it out to me. So we know that the eight is in the tens column. So that means that is eight groups of 10 or 80. So the value of the eight in this number is 80 or eight tens. So let's look at another digit. Let's look at number seven. So we want to figure out what the value of the number seven is in this whole number. First of all, we need to look at what column the seven is in. And looking at my place value grid, I can see that the seven is in the hundreds column. That tells me that it's seven hundreds or seven hundred. Let's try another number. So we're still going with the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. Let's look at the number two. We're going to try and figure out what the value of the number two is in this number. So the first thing we do is, you're right, we check which column it's in. So the number two is in the ones column. So the value of this digit is that it's two ones or the number two. So the value of the number two is two. Let's try another number three. Can you tell me, or someone that you're in your household with, what the value of the number three is in this number? First thing we do, look at what column it's in. I can tell it's in the thousands column. So that tells me that it's three thousands or three thousand. All right, let's make these numbers a little bit bigger. Now we've got our place value grid or columns going up to ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands. Now I've got lots of digits in this number. Let's choose one to figure out the value of the number. Let's look at the number six. So the number six is in the hundreds column. So the value of the number six is, yes, 600. Let's choose another number. I'm gonna pick the number all the way at the top number four. What is the value of the number four in this number? All right, look at what column it's in. It's in the hundreds of thousands column. So that tells me that it's 400,000. So the value of the four in this number is 400,000. Let's try one more. So we've got 834,792. Let's try the number three. 
So what is the value of the number three in this number? Check which column it's in, and I can see that it's in the tens of thousands column. So it's the number three in the tens of thousands column, which tells me it is 30,000. Now that one's maybe a little bit trickier, but I know that you've got your brains working at the moment. Okay, let's have a look at what the rules are for the game we are about to play. What you'll need is paper, pens, one person to be the number holder, and one or more people to be the guessers. These are the instructions. The number holder writes a number on a secret piece of paper and keeps that hidden from the guessers. The guessers say numbers and which column they think they should go into. The number holder writes a tick if the number is correct, a dot if the number is correct but it's in the wrong column, and a cross if it is not in the number at all. The guessers keep guessing until they get the whole number correct. Good morning everyone! Good morning Tori teacher! So, as you know, I have written a secret number on this piece of paper and you need to guess what this number is by saying numbers in each column. I'll put a tick if it's in the correct column, I'll put a dot if it's the correct number but in the wrong column, and I'll put a cross if it's not in my number at all. Let's get started. Yes. Eight in the hundreds column. Yes. Three in the ones. Nine in the tens. Seven in the thousands. Oh, all right, let's see. Seven gets a tick because it's in the correct column. Cross nine. Oh, nine gets a tick because it's in the correct column. And uh -uh, there is no three. All right, next round, any more guesses? Yes. Two in the hundreds column. So we can put the seven and the nine down because we know that they're in the correct column. All right. Yes. Four in the ones column. Oh, there is no four, but we've got tick, 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 tick. Oh, we're getting close. So let's bring those down. What could be in the ones column? Yes. Five. Incorrect. Let's cross the five out. All right. We're nearly there. What could be? Yes. One. Well, well done. All right. Well done. You guessed my secret number that I wrote on the paper. So hopefully you were able to follow along at home and now you'll be able to play this game with the people that you live with. And you can do bigger numbers or smaller numbers, it's up to you. All right, I hope that you had fun playing along with us and now that you know the rules of the game, you can play the game at home with the people that you live with as well. You might be able to start with smaller numbers and stretch them out to go to really, really big numbers. I hope you have fun with that. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can find all of the learning videos on the Touring Teacher YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys very soon.